Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Conrad here at Resorts World as the Memphis Grizzlies welcome their newest Grizzly, Marcus Smart. Uh, Marcus brings tremendous experience to the Grizzlies, particularly on the defensive end, a former Defensive Player of the Year Award winner. And oh, by the way, Jaron won it last year. So for the first time in league history, a team will have the last two Defensive Player of the Year Award winners on the same team. That's never happened before. We know that Marcus is a three-time All-Defensive player. We, but you might not know that he's also a three-time winner of the NBA Hustle Award, including the last two years. So, Marcus, we know that you're going to fit in great here in Memphis. We're thrilled to have you. And is, is that a little blue in the hair? Not a little blue. It's still green. Okay. <laughs> it, it turns blue when it needs to be touched up. Here. Okay, because that's, that's the first question that people have asked me. Is, is Marcus, Marcus going to change the hair a little bit? Um, I'm Pete Pranica, the TV voice of the Memphis Grizzlies. You know, Marcus Smart is in the middle. Former NBA Executive of the Year, President of Basketball Operations, General Manager Zach Kleiman of the Grizzlies, and Taylor Jenkins, who led the Grizzlies to the number two seed in the Western Conference again this season. They are all up here. Uh, the format of this press conference is we're going to start with questions in the room. Uh, Kaki Gleber over here will recognize you and bring you the microphone. Uh, and since Marcus may not know some of you from the Memphis area, please identify yourself and your outlet as well. Once we're finished with questions in the room, we do have some Zoom questions that have been submitted, and uh, we'll go from there. So with that, go ahead and ask your questions. Hey, Marcus. Uh, Drew Hill, Daily Memphian. As you've... Yeah, you know, since this trade, as you've sort of reflected on, you know, your time in Boston and now the future in Memphis, I guess, what are the first things that come to mind? Um, I think for me, um, it's just um, first start, you know, <clears throat> a lot of things personally in my life this year has happened that, um, you know, was was like just, you know, could put you under, you know, uh, put you in a dark place. Um, my house flooded. <laughs> had to deal with that. <laughs> um, so it, it was a lot of things. So for me, um, just to be able to start fresh, start over, um, you know, and, and get back to the grind. What's going on, Mark? It's uh, the Michael Cole of Memphis Commercial Appeal here. Uh, when the trade reports first started coming out, everybody kept asking me, you know, can he guard small forwards? You know, can he guard the bigger guys? Uh, what is your experience? I mean, we saw you matched up against Joel Embiid in stretches in that series uh, against the Sixers, but what would you say, you know, to people in terms of your ability to be a versatile defender, you know, playing against point guards, shoot guards, small forwards, whatever the case may be? Um, for me, if I'm on the court and you're in front of me, that's all that matters. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how small you are. If you're in front of me, my job is trying to stop playing the simple, and I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. And I like to think I, I'm very good at it, so I'm going to continue to do that. Um, I understand the criticism about it, um, rightfully so, but I've proven myself time and time again, and I'm going to continue to do that. Keith Parrish, Fast Break Breakfast. Um, what communications have you had with Tony Allen, and what are your thoughts on the parallels of how he joined the Grizzlies and now you're joining the Grizzlies? So I haven't got to talk to Tony uh, personally yet, uh, you know, um, just kind of got a lot of things going on, but uh, I, I'm definitely going to have that talk with him. But it, it's crazy. I was looking it up. Uh, people were sending it to me, the similarities, uh, you know, Oklahoma State, uh, Boston Celtics now here and everything else that came with it. So <clears throat> it's so funny because when I first met Tony Allen, I was at um, the top 100 camp when I was in high school and he was one of the camp counselors and um, we we're playing one on one. And um, um, he, I guess I forgot who it was, but one of the guys was was going off and, and he was like, who can stop him? Anybody here can stop him, let me know. And I'm looking around like, that's me. So, you know what I'm saying? So I step up and I'm like, I got him. Don't even worry about it. Everybody else can sit down. And he's like, who are you? He's like, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, that's Miss. Okay. Oklahoma State right there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and then, you know, I get the stop and, you know, the gym goes crazy and Tony's going crazy. He was like, I already know it. I already know he's going to Oklahoma State. He got that dog in him. You know how Tony's talking. So he's he's going in. So um, right then and there, you know, um, we had that bond and, and to, to see how our careers have, have been similar is kind of crazy. 
What excites you most about this new roster that you're about to join? Man, so that's a lot of things, but one is they're, you know, they're very young. They got a lot of legs. They're athletic. Um, they can run, they can jump, and, and they're willing to go out there and do it every night. So I'm excited just to be able to get out there with those guys. You know, I'm an old man now, so, you know, they're going to uh, make me feel younger. Oh, Marcus, you, you said you're an old man now. It's like your career, you know, you five Eastern Conference final appearances, playoffs every single season. You kind of went from that young guy experience in the playoffs to now that veteran. How do you think that experience can help you, you know, with this team now that's been to the playoffs, you know, uh, three consecutive years and the experiences that they've gone through? Um, I think it's going to be a huge effect for me. Um, you know, um, for me um, to be able to come out and compete like I do, um, I don't take that for granted or lightly. So all my experiences, you know, um, my downfalls as well, you know, not making it uh, to, to reach my final goal. Um, it goes all into that. I'll never forget it. You know, I harnessed it. And then I'm always trying to figure out what I can do to get better and make sure to get over that hump. And so for me to be able to bring that to a team who's right there, who's really close, um, um, I think it's going to be huge. Um, like I said, I've been in the battles. Um, I know the battles, what it takes. Um, and and I understand that um, for these guys, they are young. And a lot of them haven't been in that battle yet. And um, to be able to go into a battle with a guy that you know, he knows what he's doing. He's been there before. We're going to be all right. Okay, and we have some questions that have been submitted by Zoom. This is from Parker Fleming in Memphis. Marcus, for you, what advice or lessons from your career thus far that you are looking to pass on to this team as someone who has 108 games of playoff experience? For me, um, I guess I would like to say that advice is uh, control what you can control. You know, um, for me, I, I know we, we as competitors, we put ourselves high and we have this goal that we want to reach. And if we don't reach it, we consider ourselves as failures um, individually in a team. But uh, you can't let that, that, like that sink in, um, especially when you got a team, like I said, who are so close. Um, control what you can control on the court, off the court, whatever that is, to make sure that you can bring and be the best you can be for this team. And this is from Colin Cody, uh, Channel 3 WREG in Memphis. Uh, Marcus, uh, knowing your role and what you provided to the locker room in Boston, do you see your role in the Memphis locker room as being the same or different as it was in Boston? Um, that's a good question. I, at this moment, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I got to earn these guys' trust. You know, in Boston, I was there. I was the longest tenure guy. Um, I grew up with those guys here. You know, I'm a, I'm a new face coming in, although, you know, I, I have some experience on me. But, you know, as competitors, you see a new guy coming in, you know, um, you're not just going to, you know, give them your attention right away. They're going to have to earn it. And that's what I expect to do. So um, right now, I don't know. But um, if that's where God, you know, allows me to go and that's where he wants me to go, then definitely that's where I'll be. And then Colin also wanted to know, uh, though Ja will be serving out his suspension and away from the team, how important is it for you to build that relationship with him so that when he does come back, it's an easy transition back to the floor for both of you? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. You know, Ja is a, is a very special player, very special player. He's very important to this team. And uh, for us to do anything great, we're going to need Ja. And we're going to need Ja to be the best he can be. So um, for me, you know, as a competitor, I love to push guys to, to the limit, you know, especially a guy who, who's great. You know, um, I've done it over in Boston with those guys and, um, you know, it's my brother. So I want to be able to have that same relationship with John. Just like I said, he's a great player and we're going to need him to do what we want to do. And Colin also asked, Taylor, this is for you. Uh, three games in the summer league. How impressed are you by Gigi Jackson and what he showed particularly last night in Salt Lake City? Yeah, well, first off, uh, welcome, Marcus. <laughs> you know, you're getting all the questions right now. I love it. Uh, but we're super excited. I hope that there's more questions there with everything Marcus is saying. We're so excited about um, last couple of games. You know, Gigi been super thrilled with what he's shown. Um, obviously, the you, you see the physical tools, the capability to make plays on both sides of the floor. You know, defensively, I'm loving his rebounding. Want to get him to attack the boards even more. Be a guy that can be versatile on both ends. You know, we're figuring out as summer league goes how we can put guys in different spots and, and to be in, you know, on the ball, off the ball, guarding different positions, challenging him just to pick up our system um, each and every day. I think he's doing a really good job of that, engaging in the film process with our coaches, 
And offensively, you know, last night he even gets more opportunity, you know, not shying away from shooting up open shots, figuring out how to make reads on the perimeter, getting inside, getting inside the paint, uh, working on his ball handling, playmaking skills. So each game he's made progress. And now we've got a five game slate, hopefully even more uh, out here in Vegas. I expect him to continue to make that tr upward trend, which he's shown over the first three games. Zach, we haven't heard from you, but we are going to now because Terry Davis from the Tri-State Defender wants to know, with the moves you've made this offseason, what are your goals for next season and for the foreseeable future? I know that a parade on Beale Street is the ultimate goal, but going into next season, how do you see things evolving? Yeah, so but before getting into anything else, much more importantly, a, a hearty welcome to Marcus. You know, here, This is someone that we have been incredibly excited to bring into this organization. When we took a step back, coming out of this last season and said, what are the things that we're looking, you know, to add in this group? And you, you, you know, you put out the boxes that you're trying to check and we're looking for, you know, someone who can be the lockdown defender, you know, versatile across positions. You know, we're looking for more playmaking. We're looking for, you know, someone who's battle tested, you know, at the highest levels of the NBA, you know, to find someone. And I don't think there's many players, you know, in the NBA. And I think Marcus is the very best of them who kind of checks all those boxes to be able to, to bring, that, that type of player, that type of person into this organization, but much more importantly, someone who also just passes the gut test. You know, Marcus is someone that is, is just a flat out winner. You know, someone who's willed his team, you know, through playoff series, who's been to the finals, who's been to Eastern conference finals, you know, many times, this is the type of person that we believe is going to help us really elevate the group and get to where we want to get to, which is winning the first championship in Memphis. So welcome to Marcus. And, as we're, you know, to, to hit on the larger question of, you know, what are, are um, you know, looking ahead to this coming season, we're really excited about what we've been able to do with the, the entire group, bringing in Marcus, bringing in Derek Rose, who I think is also going to be a great, you know, veteran addition to this group. Um, we've got a lot of guys who are, are putting in great work in summer league, you know, here as well. And, and we're excited to see them take the next, you know, the next step forward. But um, having Marcus, you know, really driving winning as a significant part of this is, um, you know, a, a major driver of something we were hoping to accomplish this offseason. So we're thrilled to have Marcus with us. So Marcus, uh, as you look back on the nine years you spent in Boston, what are your thoughts about everything you accomplished, uh, the championship you didn't accomplish, the relationships you built? I know that's kind of a, a broad question, but I just want to see where you take it. Very broad question. <laughs> Damn, Jay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, you know, um, <clears throat> when I got to Boston, you know, I was a a, um, a 19 year old kid from from Dallas, Texas, and uh, you know it was a cultural shock. It was a uh, you know social shock. It was a shock to my whole life. Um, never been to the East East Coast or anything like that, so it was, it was all weird to me. Um, but I grew up. You know, I met I met some very wonderful people throughout uh, my time there. My experiences. You know, um, while in Boston, I lost my mom. Um, my fiance lost her dad while we were in Boston together. So. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been through some stuff and it's all been in Boston and Boston's my second home. So, uh, it's been tough, you know, and, uh, they're always going to have a place in, in my heart. Um, and everything I accomplished, you know, um, you know, I left, I left everything I had, uh, wearing that Jersey out on that court. And, um, although we didn't win, you know, championship in, in that big, uh, the big scheme of things, um, I, I don't consider my time there a failure. Um, you know, I helped rebuild that team at the time uh, when I came in um, and, you know, um, I left it better in, in that sense. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very ecstatic with my time there, but like I said, I'm excited for the future and what it holds me. Zach, if you can, how this speak to how this all came together, because you probably got all your plans as to what you're going to do in free agency. And then we're all following the news that day. I, I, there's got to be a part where it's like never even considered being able to get Marcus Smart on this team. And then that's able to come together. And then, Taylor, if you can, just your reaction once Zach called you and told you about this deal. Like how this all kind of – did it flip everything upside down once you realized you could get Marcus in terms of what you had planned for the summer? What I'll say on that is you, you you come out of the season, you take a step back, and you start to put things up on the board. You know what what are the the aspirational you know best case scenarios for how do we who could we potentially add to this group? How do we elevate the approach that we're taking? You know who who are the you know individuals who can really 
you know, drive winning, you know, and, and fit, you know, in a meaningful way with our group. And when we started to put names up on the board, there, there was no one higher, you know, than Marcus. And this was asked, you know, early on, this is like, Hey, like, this is, this is the pie in the sky. Like if he, if there happens to be a way that Boston, you know, would engage on this. And obviously there was, uh, you know, a transaction that didn't happen, you know, earlier in the day before the, the trade was agreed to with Boston. Never know what could have happened if that, you know, that possibility didn't, you know, come together. But uh, we had we had expressed uh, uh, a, a very high, you know, level of interest and Boston knew, you know, that Marcus is someone that we have felt passionately about, you know, being able to bring into our group and we're willing to put, um, you know, assets, you know, compelling draft assets and otherwise, um, you know, Tyus Jones, who uh, if I could just take a step back and, and say both with, with Tyus and Dylan, you know, two guys who were really critical, you know, to our success and, and building out our culture, you know, over um, the entire time that we've been operating here, you know, so major credit to, to Tyus and Dylan, who are definitely going to be missed, you know, in Memphis. But um, to, when when the opportunity to present it presented itself to acquire Marcus, it was something, you know, we, we were, um, you know, going through all the iterations of things that we possibly could do, bringing Marcus into the organization that that was at the top of the list. So um, yeah, it got to be opportunistic sometimes, but thankfully it came together that way. Oh, when for me, it was, yes, let's blank and go. I was fired up. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like, you know, you always do your due diligence, right? You know, year after year, we're always trying to, you know, continue to surround our group with great people, great competitors, people that have high IQs, uh, super unselfish. It's what Marcus stands for. Ultimate competitor at the highest basketball IQ, super selfless. He, he, he exemplifies that on the court, but also off the court. And Zach and I, you know, we're in lockstep, you know, the trust I have in him and his group to every year throughout the season and the off season, talk about how do we take the next step as a team? You know, obviously we know what our ultimate goals are. You got to have the right people in place, you know? Um, and we've been talking about this for a couple of years, you know, and as he said, it's aspirational. You never knew if it was going to actually come to fruition. You're doing your homework. Uh, and then when it came to fruition, and obviously there was, a, as he said, a transaction that didn't work out and kind of put us in line to make something happen. This is only going to elevate what we do. Marcus and I have talked about that, how he's going to elevate everything that we've already built over the last four years. But it was a yes, let's blank and go right off the bat. Uh, hopefully he feels that energy from us. I can't wait to get him into Memphis, uh, get going, you know, get on the court. As he said, build relationships with his teammates. We've got a great competitive group that needs more juice to get us to the next level. And that's what Marcus is going to do for us. Marcus, what was your reaction to the uh, fan reaction in Boston after the trade? And then also, you know, you have your foundation up there. Uh, I'm curious, you know, is your hope to bring that to Memphis as well? And 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 what do you want to accomplish off the court, you know, in, in your new city? Um, definitely. Um, the, the, the fan reaction um, in the city of Boston was was exactly what I expected to be and what anybody who's played in Boston would expect it to be. Um, it's, it's, it's all love, you know, and um, they ride, they ride for the city hard, man, just like Memphis. Right. So, you know, and, and that's how it should be. You're supposed to ride for your city like that. So it's all love. So I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by that. Um, and then really for me, excuse me, <clears throat> um, my foundation is, is something that's a really big part of my life. Um, and um, I definitely, you know, would, would love to bring it to Memphis. And we, we definitely are talking about it. We're just trying to find the right time and uh, and get things situated. But it definitely will be there. And uh, I can't wait to get into the community and, you know, really get out there and, uh, you know, show, you know, who I really am. You know, I'm more than a basketball player. Uh, I'm a human being and I care for others, you know, and I understand some of the life. Um, um, obstacles that we go through um, as humans. And uh, sometimes it just takes somebody to, to talk to you who understands you and, and who's been through what you've been through. So um, I'm very excited and I can't wait. Marcus, if we can just touch on both sides of the floor real quick. Uh, offensively, we see you playing point guard, off the ball, all these different positions. Where are you most comfortable there? And looks like you're gonna be playing, especially early in the season, a lot of point guard. How are you looking to help elevate uh, those guys on that side of the floor? And then defensively, I mean, everybody, the first thing they saw, you you and Jaron, last two defense players of the year. It's never happened before. Um, what's your reaction to that? Um, the offense, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've always grown, when I was growing up, I've always played uh, different positions, you know. Um, 
I wasn't the fastest, the tallest, the most athletic, the strongest, but you know, I had a lot of energy. So the coach is just like, just whatever, whatever he decides to do, just let him do. So, but uh, for me, um, playing point guard, you know, um, I would love to get guys open. You know, I love to to, to find guys and you know, um, you know, create a shot for the guys. Um, I see the floor differently than certain guys, uh, other guys. So for me uh, to be able to have the ball in my hands and and to to be able to dish it out from what I see is, is something that I love, but I'm very fond with playing off the ball. Um, you know, you always been taught to adapt as a, as a kid growing up and that's just what I tried to do. You know, I played multiple positions growing up, so I'm used to it all, you know? Um, so it really doesn't make any difference whether I'm on the ball or off the ball. Um, you know, I'm just going to continue to try to make guys better. And that's what I do. And coming here, you know, we got some shooters, we got guys, you know, Desmond and Luke, and then we got guys down low with Jaron and those guys. So, um, to be able to find guys and get them easier shots is something that's my job and that's what I plan to do on the defense. And like you said, me and Jaron, you know, the two last DPOYs, that's, that's unheard of. It's never been done to be on the same team. So we're already making history. So with that, and uh, we're going to continue to try to make history. It's a question for Marcus and for Taylor. Um, so Marcus, you've won three Hustle Player of the Year awards. A lot of that, you draw a lot of charges and the Grizzlies the past few seasons, for whatever reasons, don't draw that many charges. Two years ago, you took more charges than the entire Grizzlies team did, by the way. So I'm curious, uh, Marcus, are you going to help out in that element with the Grizzlies? Do you think that's something you're going to do? And then Taylor, I'm curious, is the uh, is the lack of drawn charges, is that personnel, is that strategic, um, that the Grizzlies sometimes have been on the lower end of drawn charges across the league? Um, but no, of course, I'm definitely going to try to help out that. Um, most people don't understand what a charge really does for 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 the game and for for the team. You know, a charge is something I like to say. A charge is um, is the only play in basketball that you know do four things correct. You know, so you take a charge. That's obviously a personal foul on the guy whoever drove the ball. It's a team foul on the team. That's the second good thing. Also, we also know nine times out of ten, the person who's driving the ball is probably the team's best player. So that's a advantage is right there with that. Um, that's a foul against their best players three. And uh, it's a momentum changer, which is huge. You know, now you got guys thinking when they come into the lane, you know, I got to be aware because this guy might come out of nowhere and take a charge. And I already got two fouls. I can't pick up a third one. Now, you know, it's a mental thing. And um, that's why a charge is so important. And that's why I think, you know, the charge is the most important play in the game. And, and, and definitely being able to take those charges is definitely going to help the defense. Got time for one more question coming just, in from Zoom. Yeah, just oh, real quick. Uh, I hope Marcus is up for it. He'll run the drill in training camp uh, that we've been trying to get. You know, rotations are great. It's just taking the next level. Uh, I think for us, you know, our schemes put us in positions to take charges. And, you know, I mentioned one of the greatest characteristics of Marcus is being unselfish. And when we talk about our defense having been pretty, pretty good, you know, last couple of years, I always say to be really good defensively, you have to be unselfish. Like the sacrifice even comes more on the defensive side, being in lockstep, rotations, having your teammates back. Um, but being able to make that sacrifice and taking a charge is probably one of the most unselfish things you can do in just the game of basketball, especially on the defensive side of the floor. Um, yeah, we've struggled in that area. We've shown a lot of film on that. You know, we haven't necessarily devised the drill. You got to be you know, smart with what you do in practice. But if this guy right here to my left says, hey, we got to do something a little bit differently and he leads by example, that's going to set a tone for us because when we do the, the small amount of times we had charges, you felt the impact, you felt the momentum, you felt the excitement that the bench created and obviously made the film the next day. And we talked about how important of an unselfish winning play that was. That's what a Marcus Smart embodies every single time he steps on the floor. And when we sat down a couple of weeks ago, he said, coach, I laid on the line and every time I step on the court, I mean, I'm blessed and grateful to play basketball. You know, the journey he's had as a person, as a player, uh, he speaks highly about when he steps on the floor, whether it's practice, it's a workout, it's a game, he's going to lay it on the line. So when he comes and embodies that and showcases that and leads with that, with our group, it's going to take our group to the next level. And hopefully we have a few more charges next year. Got time for one more from Zoom. Parker Fleming and coach, I want both you and Marcus to chime in on this. We talked about both you and Jaron having won the last two defensive player of the year awards. You play different positions. How do you see your defensive abilities meshing in a total team concert concept again both taylor and, uh, and marcus um well the you know well the good thing and the, the 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 uniqueness about the last two dpois is we're both versatile we can guard multiple positions so putting me on the ball and having jaron on the ball screener and switching that 
Uh, most teams will find it a, a, an advantage, but it's an advantage in our favor. You know, like I said, uh, we're very versatile and, and I can hold my own. It might not be the whole game, but I can hold my own enough. Um, and Jaron can hold his as well. So to be able to have two guys that they can hold their own in different positions is going to create havoc uh, and, and a lot of chaos for other teams. And I mean, to have two guys, you know, I always use the word anchors. You know, they're going to be able to switch. You know, we're going to utilize that uh, quite a bit more, you know, this season for sure. Guys that can vocalize on that side of the floor, uh, lead, you know, with their voices, but also how they play. Um, you know, I, I can imagine just diving in on scout reports and getting ready for our opponents, what Marcus is going to bring to the table, what Jaron can bring to the table in that department as well. But when you have anchors that can basically cover the entire court for, for 94 feet, they can start at the beginning of a possession to the end of the possession in a certain action on the perimeter, it's down low. You see what Jaron can do coming over and just evaporating anything to cover him for his teammates. What Marcus can do on the perimeter and also on the interior, we just talked about charges. You got two guys that can cover so much. It's going to uh, basically hold his teammates accountable. It's going to it's going to raise the level of our defense even more to say, hey, we've been really good. We're striving to become elite on both ends of the floor. And when you got two guys that epitomize that, but also can give you so much on the offensive end too. I mean, come on, let's see what the Grizzlies can do. I know he's fired up. I know JJ's fired up to get those two guys in together to room and set a tone. I can't wait for the first practice. We're running our drills. And I know I, I'm pretty defensive minded. These guys are only make me better as a coach. I'm fired up for it. I'm fired up too, by the way. Um, Marcus, the Grizzlies organization has a tradition of high character, high ability, high basketball IQ type players with a high competitive motor. And I know you're going to bring that to Memphis. So we are thrilled to have you here. Uh, we're going to have a photo op. We're going to have the first time we see you in your New Jersey. Uh, and uh, like Taylor says, let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks, Thank so. you, guys.